In this video, we're going to be doing some toy photography with the new McFarlane steel figure and breaking down every step of the way from concepts and ideas all the way to editing. How's it going everyone and welcome to another episode of Toy Photography Breakdown. In this one, we're going to be taking advantage of some of the freezing cold weather we've got here and some snow stuff like that. So sometimes it can be pretty difficult when it's freezing cold out to get motivated and go out there and take some toy photography. But if you think about it in the right way, you can kind of twist it to your advantage and really make something really cool that you can only really do this time of year. So I've got a pretty cool idea, I think. Let me show you what figures I've got. Let's open them up and then we'll talk about my idea. So check it out. Right here I've got a couple figures. They're both steel from McFarlane Toys. You know, Steel, he's one of the few Supermen that popped up in the reign of Superman comics back in the 90s after Superman was, was dead. I'm kind of nostalgic of the character from reading those comics a long time ago, so I'm just very excited for Steel in general, and McFarlane Toys actually sent these over to me, so McFarlane, thank you guys, you guys are amazing. The people at McFarlane are awesome, and they make great figures, and I'm just happy that they exist, so thank you guys. So this one here is the normal steel figure that you're gonna be able to find in most stores, etc. This is the platinum edition that you'll be able to find on McFarlandToyStore.com. And I will have both of these guys linked in the description if you are curious and getting either of them because they're they're pretty cool and I'm excited to open them up. So with steel, I was thinking, how could I possibly use him? to take advantage of this wintry snow we've got out here. And I immediately thought of chopping wood because he's got that big hammer and it's winter time. You gotta chop wood for the fire or something. I don't know. So I'm gonna have Steel using his giant hammer to chop wood uh, and have some, some wood chips flying or something and some snow falling. Uh, I think it'll be a really cool just winter themed inspired shot and then just kind of fun all at the same time. Okay, let's just go ahead and open him up right now. Okay, well here he is. He's definitely a great looking figure. He looks just like steel. The proportions are great. He's tall, he's big, he's got broad, huge shoulders, and he's got big feet, which are cool with an action figure because it helps with keeping him stand. I appreciate that very much. He does have like a, a rubber cape, which, you know, I'm always gonna love a cloth cape more, but this one actually really doesn't look so bad. It looks pretty good, I think, actually. With the price point that McFarlane figures are at, I think this is a fantastic figure for that, so uh, I'm very happy with him. Cool, awesome. Okay, I was able to get him in a pose where he looks like he's swinging, chopping down, like he could be chopping wood. It wasn't easy, to be honest, but then I remembered, like, when you're chopping wood, like, your, your hands aren't together. They're kind of far further apart like that. And it actually helped with me getting him into the pose, and it also looks more natural, too. So I am I'm happy with that. His hammer can droop a little bit, but I think when we're outside in the cold, it'll be very straight and, and will we'll not droop as much because it's so cold. So that actually kind of works out. So I love the look of this steel figure a lot. Actually, this is a really great figure, but he's not quite shiny enough for me, so I'm gonna do some customization on him before I get started with my photo. So let's go and do that now. So getting steel painted, custom paint, whatever, is gonna be nice and easy because he's supposed to be nice and silvery and shiny. And you know what I've got right here is my favorite stuff, rub and buff is the stuff. And <laughs> I'm going to really easily be able to cover this guy with this and really make him super, super silvery and shiny. But uh, just having this pretty much coated all over him is gonna look really, really good. But one thing I'd like to do so I can do this totally freely is remove the cape and then put it back on. He's got three points right here and then right here and here on the front of him. So I'm gonna pop the cape off and I'm gonna just start covering him with this rub and buff and then rubbing it in a lot. <laughs> so let's go ahead and do that. him and look how shiny he looks so I've purposefully tried to stay away from like the Superman symbol and like the belt just so there's like a little bit of contrast between some of the things there let's go give him a clear coat finish so he's not sticky anymore so I'm not getting silver on my fingers and then we can put the cape back on okay 
Okay, so I put the matte finish on him. So he is all smooth and stuff, looks pretty good. I am going to reattach his cape with super glue right now. Which actually shouldn't be too hard. I just gotta kind of put the glue here and then in these two sockets here. And the cape should just stick right back on. And I'm not gonna use anything crazy for super glue. I just have some very basic, extreme power, thick super glue. This is from like Hobby Lobby. I don't know, it's just basic super glue. Here we go. Okay, and here he is, uh, totally done, painted. Cape is back on. He looks super good. He looks much better, and that was so easy. All I did was just lather him up with rub and buff, and then put the cape back on, and everything's super shiny. So if you have this figure, I highly recommend doing this. Like, this is a big change, and he looks like steel, like he's made out of steel. You know, looks really good. I'm gonna go get him all set up for my photo outside. Like he's chopping some wood. It's gonna, it's gonna be great. It's a sunny day outside, which is perfect, even though it's freezing. So let's go and uh, get him all set up. I'll see you out there. So check this out. I went and I actually chopped up some little pieces of wood for steel to chop outside. So I put these two pieces of wood, actually these three, and I put some wire in them and attached two other smaller pieces on top. So then when it looks like he's chopping, I can use those wires to make it look like there's wood, you know, being chopped and flown around like that. <laughs> Which I think looks pretty good. Very excited. Okay, here we go. It's freezing cold out, so I'm gonna get my explanation out as quick as possible and take this shot. So let's see what I got. We've got steel over here in the exact pose and everything I was hoping. The wood being chopped is right here, so they're suspended by the wires, so it hopefully will look like there's wood being chopped and thrown all over the place. We've got another little pile of wood there. I also put up a little bit of fake green stuff behind to see if that will just add to the background at all. I've got my sun, it's actually behind a cloud right now, but it's behind us, so it's creating some nice shadows and stuff. Here we go, here's the sun and everything is all set up. One thing with the snow, since it's white and reflective, there's so much light everywhere, so it's really easy for snowy photos to look washed out. So make sure you can crank that shutter speed as, as fast as you'd like, because you got plenty of lights going over here. And I, I also have him suspended with one little thing to hold him up, one little skewer there. I've also got my handy light reflector with the sun, so I can bounce it wherever I want it, see? As far as my angle goes, I have it down as far as down as possible so I can get a close to the ground angle. And I've got my 85 millimeter lens because I love that lens. Everything looks so good with that lens. So here are my settings right here. You probably can't see it. There we go. I got my shutter speed at 2500. Like I said, you can keep it nice and fast when it's out and super sunny like this in the snow. And my uh, ISO is at 400 like it always is. And my f-stop is at 2.2. I like it nice and low so I can get a nice blurry background. I really like that. So um, yeah, those are, those are my settings. And I'm gonna hurry up and take this shot before I die of uh, hypothermia. Here we go. Okay, I'm back inside where it's nice and warm. And the photo looks pretty good. I'm actually quite happy with it. Uh, there's a couple things about it I don't love, so let me talk about those first. So right off the bat, if you zoom in, the edge of the hammer is totally out of focus. I didn't have it angled right. He wasn't on the focus line, stuff like that. Also, the wood over here is also not focused. It'll be all right. Let's see what we can do to fix that and make it look a little bit better. Uh, the other thing too, which is right exactly what I was saying, is be careful with the snow because it could get very washed out. <laughs> so all of the snow up in the front here is just totally white. But uh, I think we can fix these things. So, so this one right here is actually the main photo I want to use as the main focus. Uh, my main canvas and there's a couple things from these ones I want to grab uh, too so from this one I want to take some of the bokeh up here and bring that in I like that and then in this one I like some of the snow down here which uh, I think looks kind of nice grab my lasso tool and get some of this bokeh just like that draw a little circle we're gonna control C go back over to my main one control shift V which adds a new layer, there it is. And let's change this layer to lighten, which is great, it makes it all blend in perfectly. All the darker areas turn translucent and the lighter areas stay 
not translucent and uh this one i just want this stuff around by the cape so let's take that and we're just going to repeat the same copy paste process with the lighten layer type with this as well and there we go and since i had didn't touch my camera at all it's all lined up perfectly so oh, now that i've got all of the combining of the things that i need to do uh, I can combine and merge all the layers and then move forward from there. So to merge the layers, I just go over here, click on Merge Visible, just like that. Or I can do Control shift e and that will do it as well. So next, let's get rid of these wires here. I'm going I'm to use the Remove Tool. If you want to know more info about this Remove Tool, I have this whole editing tip video, which is really great. I'm just going to draw lines right over the wire. And it should get rid of it. <laughs> Look at that. So I'm going to do that here. And I'm also going to do it, make it a little bit bigger. And I'm also going to get rid of this one. There we go. Just like that. Okay, so the first thing I'm going to do is try to fix the hammer a little bit and the wood. Because it is kind of hard to see. So I'm going to go grab my uh, burn tool, which is just like... A tool where you can just darken things and I'm just gonna darken it up that looks much better I think that really looks like you're actually there you know it's much more clear about that so one of the things I really want to do is add some motion blur to the hammer and to the wood so I'm going to duplicate both the hammer and the pieces of wood and then add motion blur to them to make it look like there's there's stuff moving here so if I grab my object selection tool which is right over here I can it's really cool it'll like give you a little preview of what it can try to select so I'm gonna do that with the hammer for I'm just gonna copy and paste the exact thing Control C, Control Shift V, and there we go. So I'm gonna take this and I'm going to add some motion blur to this one layer, as you can tell. See, I just have one layer now of just the hammer. To add motion blur, we're gonna go to Filter, Blur, Motion Blur, and we can choose what direction we want it to come from. Or we, go, we want it to go down-ish. There we go. So there's motion blur on it now. So what I can do is I can move it around. I'm gonna move it up a little bit. Okay, and now it really looks like he's swinging it. I don't like how much of it's on his arm there, so I'm just gonna erase that. Let's do the same thing with, with the wood. Okay, so he looks pretty good now. The motion blur is in there. He's chopping away. The wood's flying all over the place. It doesn't look too bad. Not so bad at all. So uh, next, I really want to go and get rid of this horrible white, just plain white snow down here and put something more interesting. And I'm going to use a generative fill. So first, I'm going to just draw a big box around all of the white here down on the bottom. And if you want to know anything more about this generative fill here, head back to the same video I linked earlier before. I have so much more on there than that. But essentially, all I'm going to do is just type in something like snow and let it do its magic. It'll give us three different options to choose from, but uh, I'm feeling that this one I think looks the best. So by doing Control shift e we can merge all the layers together just like that. Now we can edit the whole photo as a whole. So if we go to Filter and then Camera Raw Filter up here, we can go and edit everything we need to in here. The colors, the effects, the lighting, the texture, all of that right in here. And it's going to make a big difference. There's so many options in this. I always, always recommend using the Camera Raw Filter up here in Photoshop. Next, I'm going to go over here to the Dodge Tool and I'm going to spend some time taking all of the light parts and shiny parts on steel and making him shinier and lighter and, and overall make all the details just look that much stronger on him. It makes a big difference, especially with shiny characters like him or like Mandalorian. And if you couldn't tell already, I'm having some audio issues, which is why my voice just isn't matching up with my mouth right now, which is just so funny. <laughs> but anyway, I do have one more step with the photo, and that's going to be adding a fake blue sky using that generative fill again. So I'm going to be drawing a nice little box in the top just like this. And I'm just going to type in something like clear blue sky, and then click generate and let it do its magic and see what it gives me. Ah, something simple like this is exactly what I needed so I could put in a nice lens flare and finish this bad boy up.
To spice it up with my favorite lens flare, we're gonna go to Filter, Render, Lens Flare. Then all we need to do is just choose where we want the lens flare, whether it be up here, down there, and then hit OK, and then we've got our perfect lens flare just like that. That looks great. Okay, and here is the final product. Doesn't look too bad, to be honest. I'm actually quite happy with it. It's pretty much exactly how I envisioned it to look. If I did learn anything, though, I think it was to adjust maybe the aperture, maybe have it be a little bit more wide open so we could get it to be a little bit less washed out, and then maybe we'd even get a few more things in focus, like the hammer and the wood stuff like that but overall i am quite happy with the image i would love to know what you guys are thinking in the comments below so i hope you enjoyed the video thank you so much for watching hopefully you got some kind of tips or whatever with editing or with snow falling or hopefully just gave you a little bit of inspiration to go outside when it's freezing cold bundle up and still make something awesome that you'll be proud of if you did enjoy the video please consider liking and subscribing to the channel that would be amazing and thank you so much for watching i'll see you in the next one